conversation um, about you, you did. why about why neon would be smaller than lithium. And several, stop it, several groups came up with something about what? Can you state what you came up with? Oh, that is so good. All right, so with lithium, we've just got one little electron out here. What, what do particles with opposite charges do? Attract one another or repel? Attract. They attract one another. Opposite charges are attracted to one another. So these protons are attracting all those electrons. And this, this one little electron out here has got, you know, an energy level between it and its little protons. Okay, it's hanging out. Well, here, suddenly, we've got a whole lot more protons. We haven't added any energy levels between the nucleus and those outer electrons. And we have eight electrons on the outside. That's a lot of pull. That's a very strong pull. So hence, it collapses that atom down. No, it doesn't collapse it, but it pulls it in much more tightly. And that's, that's exactly what you guys came up with, which is excellent. So now, let's think about how that explains this other phenomenon we talked about. And I am not drawing francium. I'll go as far as potassium, OK? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so 19 protons. Um, two electrons on the first energy level, right? How many electrons on the second energy level? Eight. Eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many electrons on the next energy level? Be careful. Eight. Eight. Why? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Why aren't there... 18. No, you can hold 18 on here. And we're going up to the fourth. It has something to do with the fact that the D crosses over. Which oh, that's, um, Remember that? Are we going to have to draw those? No. Oh, good. Okay, so here's potassium with our 19 electrons, 19 protons, and two electrons way the heck out from the nucleus, yes? Pretty far out there. They have one, two, three energy levels between them and the nucleus. Okay, now let's draw krypton. Let's go right straight across the row to krypton. And how, what's the atomic number on krypton? 36. 36. So this one was 19, this is 36. So we have 36 protons. How many electrons in the first level? Two. How many in the next level? Eight. 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many in the next level? Well, we're going up to 36 electrons here. So look at krypton. You know it's got 1s2. Pardon? Well, um, if there were more than... We're just going to... So you know that noble gases always end with a full what and what on their uppermost energy level. P level. S and P. So this one's got two, which are your S, and then one, two, three, draw that in tighter, four, five, six. Okay? So that's 36 electrons. Now, here we have these two little electrons that are way out there. There are 19 protons pulling on them, but there are a whole lot of levels, of energy levels, between them and the nucleus. And there are just two of them on that outside. Here, we've got eight on that outer level. So while there are three energy levels between the nucleus and those outer electrons, those valence electrons, we've got a lot more protons to pull on them. 
Okay, so that explains why radius goes this way. Atomic radius decreases as we go across a period due to increasing nuclear charge. Atomic radius decreases across a period, which is this way, due to increasing nuclear charge. So as we go from lithium to neon, or from potassium to krypton, we have <coughs> more protons to pull those electrons in. And whatever our outer level is, we haven't added any new energy levels across the period, right? But we've got more electrons on that outer level to be sucked in by the nucleus. Okay? How, how is that sitting with you between zero, I have no idea what you're talking about, and five? Got it. Hold up hands. Okay. I got lots of ones and twos. Okay. We're going to explain this, and I got some, some variables. Lights are flickering. Okay. All right. Let's, let's use these same atoms and look at the other trend that we're going to talk about today. As we go down a group, so as we go down a group, atomic <coughs> radius increases. Does that make sense just visually? So we've added energy levels. We've added, we've added protons, we've added electrons, that's true. But as we go down a group, we're going to have the same number of electrons. Whoops, there should only be one out there. Huh? We're going to have the same number of electrons on the outermost energy level, right? Because a group shares a number of valence electrons, yes? Well, in this case, you've got one electron that's being attracted to the nucleus. It's only got one energy level between it and the nucleus. Here we've got one little electron out here, but it's got four energy levels between it and the nucleus. We actually call this electron shielding. So the further away from the nucleus you get, the harder it is to pull those electrons in. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's look at that example for neon and krypton. As we go from neon to krypton, we've added energy levels. We still have eight valence electrons in the outermost shell, but now here there are a lot more layers to shield it from the pool of the nucleus. So we say that as you go down a group, radius increases due to, we call it electron shielding. So these inner electrons shield the outer electrons from the pull of the nucleus. Okay. The, the farther out they get, the harder it is to pull them in. The more of a stretch it is. And I spelled shielding wrong. Sorry about that. Okay. Does that make sense? Half and half? Sort of. Sort of? Okay. We'll, we'll keep revisiting. I'm going to turn off the, the recorder for now.